Welcome to Figma Bytes, a video series that aims to teach you how to speed up your Figma workflow. Today we're talking about constraints. No, not how I'm trying to limit my calories. The kind that Figma gives us to help control how objects within frames maintain their position relative to the frame as you resize it. Notice when we resize this frame that the circle stays still. Sometimes this is what you want, but other times you might want the circle to change position in different ways as you resize the frame. By default, Figma will set constraints to top left, which you can see in the constraints section of the right panel. If we resize this frame, the circle stays in the top left position. Let's go over all the other options in our menu. We can change this to right bottom, which makes the circle stick to the bottom right of the frame. Another option is center center, which keeps the circle smack in the center as we resize our frame. In this example, we have a rectangle in our frame. We can maintain the same position on the left and right by changing our constraints to left and right. Now when we resize, the rectangle grows horizontally. We can also do this for top and bottom to get our rectangle to grow vertically. This is all gravy. Now let's look at how we can put it all into a dish to create something a little tastier. Here we have a thumbnail component. We want to make this thumbnail a little larger, so we resize the container and it doesn't change size. Let's fix this. We'll start by selecting our title and change its constraints to bottom so that it stays at the bottom of the container. We'll take our divider and set it to left and right plus bottom. Our media container needs to be left and right plus top and bottom so that it extends in both directions. And inside of this media container is an icon that we want to change to center and center so it stays put right in the middle. Now if we duplicate this thumbnail by pressing option plus click and drag, we can resize it and our elements behave as expected. Let's look at one last example of how we might put all of these ingredients together into a more interesting dish. We have a navigation bar and we're going to create a quick website. When we resize this, it isn't quite changing how we'd want it to, so we can adjust its constraints. We'll set the menu to left center, the logo to center center, our setting icon to right center. Now when we resize it, it works as we'd want it to for any screen size. Let's copy our navigation to our canvas and resize it to fit our frame. We'll set its constraints to left-right so that it grows horizontally. Next, we'll take our Add button and put it on the bottom, setting its constraints to right-bottom. Now, when we resize the frame, all the elements resize as we want. We have dessert on the menu today. If we drag a copy of our thumbnail component over to our canvas and duplicate it so that we have two side-by-side, -side, we can actually wrap them in their own frame by pressing Option-Command-G. Now we can set up a layout grid by clicking the plus button in the layout grid section of the right panel. Change the grid to columns and put a 20 pixel margin. Let's resize our parent container to touch the edges of our frame and then reposition and resize our thumbnails to fit the columns. Now that we have a grid set up, we can adjust the constraints to left and right for the thumbnails and their parent container. Now if we resize our frame, the cards resize relative to the grid we've set up, giving us a great way to create responsive layouts in Figma. That's how you use constraints. I hope this Figma Byte helps you control your creations with consistent configurations. Thanks for watching.